everyone, I'm Lord Flash and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program Historic Progression where I'll, we follow the journey of human spaceflight using the medium of Kerbal Space Program and some fantastic contract packs. Welcome back to what's going to be episode 5. In the last episode we started launching the Explorer probes which are the first satellites to go, well, the first American satellites to go into orbit. We've not had a contract for Sputnik yet. I hope everyone's enjoying the series so far and I think we're going to kick this off now. So, taking a look at Mission Control, we've also got the Explorer 2 contract. This is the second in the Explorer series. Now, this one just did a suborbital trajectory, crashed into the Earth. Um, there was a failure and it didn't actually get anywhere. This one I'll do off-camera, just because it's going to be... You've seen plenty of suborbital flights before. It's not that hard to get a rocket off the launch pad and then slam it into the sea. We'll accept that now. And then there's the more interesting one, which is Vanguard 1, which is the one I'll show you um, a little bit later on. Vanguard 1 is the fourth artificial Earth, Earth satellite after Sputnik 1, Sputnik 2 and the Explorer 1. And it was the first solar powered satellite. Now in Kerbal Space Program we're doing this using the deployable solar panels. And whilst contact was lost in 1964, it's the oldest man-made satellite that's still in orbit of the Earth. And it was designed to test the launch capabilities of a three-stage launch vehicle as part of the Vanguard project and the effects of the environment on the satellite and its systems in Earth orbit. It was also used to obtain geodetic measurements through orbit analysis, and it was described as the grapefruit satellite by Nikita Khrushchev. So, I think we'll accept that contract, and I'll join you guys again in a little bit when we're ready to start working on the Vanguard 1. See you in a bit. And welcome back everyone. We've just completed our Flight of Explorer 2, fairly uneventful, smashed it back into the Earth, and... With that, we can now launch also get a contract for the Explorer 3 launch. This is the third in the uh, satellite series, in the Explorer series, and this is very, very similar to Explorer 1 and 2. This one goes into an orbit above 275,000 metres, so we can do that one a little bit later on. In fact, I'll probably do Explorer 3 off-camera as well, just because it's another mission very similar to what we saw last episode. So we'll accept that now. We've also been offered a contract to start doing scans of the surface of Kerbin. This is an interesting one we want to keep in mind for later on, so I think we'll accept that, even though it's not a historical one. And I think we also want to ha accept this contract to return to Kerbin from orbit, because that's a pretty good goal to have in mind. So, moving on, I said I'd show you guys the Vanguard 1 build. First things first, though, because we're going for more complex orbits, we're now going to upgrade the tracking stations. We can use our control nodes on the map, which I can show you on this flight as well. We're also going to upgrade the mission controls, so we can have unlimited contracts activated. And I think finally we won't upgrade that because we've run out of money. However, everything else was pretty good. So, Vanguard 1. Now this is going to be, we're going to try and follow the original mission brief as, as much as we can, and that's going to be to test a three-stage launch vehicle. So we're going to begin, not with that thing, um, I think we'll probably start, it was described as the, it had a funny name, didn't it? Given a very funny name by uh, Khrushchev. Where have we gone? The Grapefruit Satellite. So if we're going with something grapefruit sized and shaped, I guess the Octo will do. The thing, this thing's going to be staying up in orbit, so we'll give it some utility stuff. So let's give it a small inline reaction wheel. Let's put some, hmm, I think we should probably put some batteries on here. That's probably enough batteries, right? Now this thing's going to go up into high orbits. We'll actually have some more science to transfer, so we will put some instruments on this. Thermometer, I'm going to give it a reflectron. And as well as the reflectron, we will give it a barometer. We'll give it a barometer if Kerbal Space wants to work for us. And we'll pop a mystery gill on there. And this should give us a fairly solid probe core. Now we also want to have as part of this some solar panels which are deployable. So I think we'll bob some deployable 3x2s on the side here. Put them up at the top, that shouldn't interfere with anything. So that's going to be our probe core. We'll also put a little nose cone on it. Because we don't think we've... Oh no, we have got procedural fairings. Okay. Well, in that case then, that's our probe core. So our next stage will be to put a small decoupler on here. Actually, we want a three-stage launch vehicle. So let's go with this 
thing. Scale that down, and then we'll go with a very similar launch method for orbit as we did on the Explorer. I think we can cut that thing's thrust down to about a thrust weight to ratio of two. Then we'll pop another one of these on here. And along with that, we'll put in a fairing base. It's on there now. Go for a conic fairing. It's not quite grapefruit sized, but hey, what the heck. That works for me so far, staging wise. And then I think we'll pop a decoupler on here. So that's the third stage. And when that decoupler pops, we're also. No, actually, I think we'll leave those there for now. Now we want to put the next stage, and this will be the orbital transfer stage on. So actually we might just have comic fairings. This isn't going to need a huge amount of fuel, so if we cut this down to a 20 second burn time, that gives it 500 meters per second up there, just for final adjustments to the orbit. And then we're going to want to put on a that's much smaller than I thought it was. We want to put on a rocket propellant tank. And this will have the engine that transfers us up into a higher orbit. And that can be a Vesta rocket. It does have gimbal in, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And then the next one, put another decoupler on there. And then finally, another couple of fuel tanks. With a swivel. That gives us plenty of Delta V. It's not hugely overbuilt, and it's within the contract budget, so we can live with that. So we're also going to want some winglets. Pop four on here. I think that, for the Vanguard 1, is going to work. Save up that design. So engine fires then that stage will fire, then that engine will fire. I think at the same time as those firing, that could fire as well. What's the height this thing's got to get to? 380,000 metres, actually we might want some more Delta V on here. So we'll put one more fuel tank on. That's definitely enough Delta V. Okay, save the Vanguard 1, and if everything's ready to go, I think we can launch. Those will fire when that engine fires. That's perfect. Save and launch. Oh, whoops. We're one part over the limit. Well, in that case, it's getting three wings. There. Perfectly within our parts budget. So our next thing to upgrade is definitely going to be the, v the vehicle assembly building as these things start to get more complex. So let's take this thing out for a launch. Now this is going to be a fairly interesting one because we're going for a very high orbit where we can hopefully get some more interesting science, transfer, transmit that back. Um, high orbits, you definitely require more delta V and you really want to be uh, launching as optimally as possible. So hopefully I'll be able to show those of you who are new to KSP an optimal launch pattern here. So, starting on the launch pad fairly standardly, we'll put our SAS on, throttle up to full, and we'll fire the engine. And I'm just going to start ever so slightly angling the nose right on launch. Not too much, just a little bit. Just so we start to pick up some horizontal, ho some horizontal velocity, but we're not going to tip the thing over. And this swivel engine is a complete beast for thrust to weight ratio. You can put quite a lot of fuel on it, and it will just keep carrying you up there. Oh, we managed to. Uh, I forgot with uh, Explorer 2, which actually beat a speed, re speed record. I thought I'd have the thing re enter the atmosphere under the power of its engines as quickly as possible. And so that's a uh, pretty cheap way of getting that done. But what the hey, it achieved a record, so the flight wasn't a total waste of time. So up we go, aiming towards the sun. That's quite a stunning image. I really love how this game can look with scatterer and some individual enhancements. Currently, 
I've been having some bugs of dating Scatterer, and those bugs are C-cans. It's not too happy with having uh, multiple mods doing one function. And so, for now, I can't update Scatterer. However, hopefully, fairly soon, C-can will get an update and that will fix itself. Or I'll just have to download Scatterer's updates manually. So now that we're up a bit higher, up to about 20,000 metres, we're going to start tipping over. This isn't perfectly optimal, but... And again, we're going to do this very, 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 very carefully. Starting to tilt things, it's going to pick up surface speed faster as it tilts over now. Remember, this is going to be a very high orbit. And as you can see, in the last videos, we've not been able to click anything on our trajectory. Now that we've updated the... Oh, there's the engine out of fuel. Excellent, and there we go. So there we are, launching on this engine. And this should give us plenty of fuel to achieve that high orbit, I hope. So yeah, in the previous episodes, we've seen that we couldn't click anything on the orbit path, and we couldn't make any nodes. Now that we've updated the tracking centre, we can use probably the most useful feature of Kerbal Space Program, which is the uh, manoeuvre node system. This is an absolutely fantastic... I'm just going to bring this back a little bit, because I don't want to go out of radio control. What was it? About 400,000 metres that we need to be at. So that's gone up pretty high now. Continuing to go up. That's more than enough. Okay. And that should still be in radio control. So I think we'll just boost that along ever so slightly. And we can rely on the height that the rocket will have achieved. So now I can show you manoeuvre nodes in action. So you'll click on, for orbit, you'll click on the apoapsis, add a manoeuvre, and then you'll stretch out this prograde marker here. And that will then put a node in place that you can follow, and that will allow you to achieve an orbit. Because then you can see how much delta V you need. Try and even this up as much as possible. In the mouse wheel. So you have the drag, and you can use the mouse wheel for fine adjustments. So if we just do that, there we are. That's about as circular as we're going to get, I think, on this one. So up we go. 1184 meters per second required for this burn. Oh, it's done the graphics bug again. Never mind. So 1184 meters per second for this burn. I think we've probably got uh, maybe a thousand in there. Maybe less. It's only a third second burn. There's not third seconds of fuel left in here, though, so we'll see how that goes. The nodes in six minutes. Now you want to burn evenly across your nodes. And that's quite important. Because that allows it to distribute the delta V. So up we go. Up, up, up. So we're going to stop burning at about 20 seconds because we're then going to be switching to the smaller engine partway through this burn. Thankfully the declopper will give the probe a slight speed boost. So up we go. We're still in radio communication. That's good. Well, one thing we are going to do, now that we're in space, is extend our solar panels. You can also attract these to action groups, but I haven't done that yet. Those will then fold out and spin. There we go. Just time accelerating up to it. So here we go. We are still in radio comms. That's excellent. We're at 30 seconds now. Now, don't start burning here. We're going to start burning more like 20 seconds. Here we go. And on the money. And you'll then want to track, on the nav ball, this blue indicator which has appeared. And that's your target indicator. That's what you want to burn towards to achieve that orbital manoeuvre. So we've burned over the node fairly evenly. And we are going to be perfectly within our delta V budget here. All the engines, all the decouplers gone. And now just the little engine is firing to get us up into that orbit. And there we are, we've achieved orbit as the camera changes. And finally... Oh, we're out of radio communication. However... We seem... Oh, it's counted as Explorer 3 as well. That is one quirk of the contract system, but never mind. So there's Vanguard 1 and technically Explorer 3, I guess. 
uh, launched up in there. We've lost communications because it's gone too far away. So I think what I'll do is I'll just leave this thing. I'll whiz it back around till we get into comms range again. And then I'll rejoin you guys. Um... Oh, will you close, please? Um... And leave that. There we are. Okay. So I'll rejoin you guys back at the space center. I'm just going to whiz this thing around and collect some more science data and transmit it back from the high orbit. And I'll see you guys very, very shortly. And welcome back everyone. We're here after that successful mission of Vanguard 1. We've got plenty of signs. We've completed those contracts. And yeah. Now as part of that process we did manage to complete Explorer 3 as well. But never mind that. We also have a uh, contract to launch Explorer 4. Which is another one. This is an orbit above 220,000 meters. Fairly simple for our Explorer craft. We'll accept that. And we now finally have the Sputnik contract. Slightly out of time. We're travelling back here. But uh, this is Sputnik 1. Which was the first artificial Earth satellite. Launched by the Russians. And this was launched into an elliptical low Earth orbit. On the 4th of October 1957. 23 inches in diameter. With four radio antennas to broadcast its pulses. It was visible around the Earth. And the radio pulses were detectable as well. And... As it states, this success in 1957 is what precipitates um, the American crisis around Sputnik and the space race as part of the Cold War. It's a very, very interesting period in history where everyone's struggling to kind of one-up the other, but on a nuclear and quite terrifying scale. So we'll certainly be accepting that one, and we'll cover that in our next video, I think, in the series, where we can be doing Sputnik 1 and Explorer 4. We'll also potentially start thinking about these low-resolution scans, and I think we're also going to accept this contract to start space tourism, just so that when we eventually are sending people up into space, we can think about doing that. Oh, Fab. So, before we close up, I think we're going to take a look at what we can buy with the science we've earned from our missions. So, we can either go for advanced rocketry, where we start to get some bigger boosters, launch escape systems, some more of these Russian-style fuel tanks as well, and more Russian-style rocket motors, which are pretty nice. So I think we'll definitely be getting those so we can do our Sputnik stuff, especially as some of these will be quite useful when we start to do more Russian rockets. So with that in mind, I think, because there's nothing in here that we particularly need right now, just some adapters. Flight control, nothing in there we hugely need right now. There's some nice Soviet spaceship parts there. Enhanced survivability, well that comes with some command pods. We're not going to be using command pods anywhere near as yet. So, yeah, I think we'll go for our advanced rocketry so we can start boosting more stuff up into space. Fab. So that's the science spent from today's episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. There seem to have been plenty of views and they seem to be picking up fairly quickly, so it seems like you are. If you are enjoying the thing, enjoying the series, feel free to leave a like. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I'm hoping to make this slightly more regular if I can, but uh, work and travel permitting. But, um, yeah, and if you like the video or you'd like to see more stuff, you'd like to see me cover a particular topic, a particular type of rocket, uh, feel free to leave a comment below with what you'd like to see. If you've got any suggestions as well, anything like that, feel free to uh, drop me a line. Well, thank you very much to what for everyone... Yeah, let me put my teeth back in. Thank you very much to everyone for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!